And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Flash Friday. On the Tom Lika Show, headlights on across North America. Ladies, if you see a guy with the headlights on, show him your cans. If you've seen a nice pair of cans, call in and give me the complete report here at 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Lika Show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you should... Uh, course call in here and uh, do whatever you like you know yell scream complain jump up and down it's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating and if you're not we kick your ass the hell off the telephone just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 magda on the tom like show hello Yes, I was calling. Hi, Tom. Hi. Okay, you were talking about FDIC insurance a little bit earlier. Yes. Where is this $250,000 figure you're getting? Uh, I think I'm going to have to school you today, Tom. Well, it's appeared a number of places, as a matter of fact. The $250,000 refers to the amount that's insured in one bank. An account is insured up to $100,000. But you can have uh, up to $250,000 insured at a bank as long as it's in three separate accounts. Okay, wrong. <clears throat> you can have funds insured in a bank based on how the account is vested. That just means how the account is set up. Now, let's assume you have, you have to have what is called qualified beneficiaries. That's either a child, grandchild, parent, or sibling. That's what increases your insurance. But you can, you know, you can name, you know, your brother Jack and Joe, and as long as they fall as a qualified beneficiary, you're going to get additional insurance. Like, for instance, a husband and wife have a joint account. They name their two children, Amy and Jack, as their beneficiaries. That account is insured for 400000 See the problem, Tom? People don't understand the insurance, so they think they have to spread their eggs all around town when if they properly vested that account, they can insure it for over a million dollars. But as you probably know, the average person is a moron who's too lazy <laughs> to learn those arcane rules. Yeah, well, that's why I'm, I'm trying to help them out a little. Now, I understand, but what I'm trying to say is the average person really doesn't understand. They barely understand that they're insured, much less that they're insured for 100000 Correct. Some, some think everything's insured. Some don't even know that they're insured. Correct. Some don't think a bank could go out of business. So uh, you have to understand, I, I know what you say is right, and I could sit here uh, like the chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank or, or the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and, and, and give all that information out. But the average person doesn't know it. Doesn't even know the information I gave out. True. I work for a credit union which is governed by NCUA, which is a to FDIC. And what happens is I see people all, I mean, and again, you're right by saying most people don't have that much money anyways to worry about what they have. You'd be surprised, though, the amount of people nowadays who do have over $100,000. I see it on a daily basis. And it's just not knowing how to properly vest an account. But just one thing to get through to your listener, you know, to the listeners out there and to everybody else, look up, look it up. FDIC, it's online. There's, there's estimators on there. They're called estimators. It tells you how to input your information on how your account is vested to see how you can set that up. It's it's out there. Look it up. FDIC, NCUA. You can definitely insure an account, have an account insured for more. You just have to know how to do it. That's that's really the which most thing. people don't look. Look, the, the bottom line here is to try to avoid having your money in a bank that's likely to fail. And my rule of thumb, and it's just mine, 
is whatever bank was offering the highest interest rate on CDs is probably... Needs the money. They need the money. They need the money, right. and they um, put it this way, uh, you know, there's a reason they need the money. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. And just like with IndyMac, I mean, if people knew, I mean, the same founders that founded IndyMac founded Countrywide. You had said that earlier this week. You put the question out there, and, and it is true. Um, Mozillo, I believe, is his last name. And Angelo yeah. Mozillo, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, they founded it, you know, after Countrywide was founded, and I think it was 84, so... You know, trouble was already brewing in Countrywide, so we could have expected that there'd be some trouble down the line at the other baby, IndyMass. But who really in our, our lifetime right now would have thought that we'd see the bank actually be taken over by the feds? Nobody did. Well, but, uh, that's not true because uh, you might be a little young, dear. I see your age on the screen uh, to remember the savings and loan scandal of the 1980s. No, many, correct, correct. Many it's, banks were taken over by the feds. Yeah, but what I'm saying is who would... Think the way things were going, that we would like literally have seen it this recent again. I mean, people really. I mean, I I, I know people that would. Well, I believe it, and but the reason I believed it, the reason I believed it, uh -huh. was because when they lowered interest rates below two percent, and many people were getting adjustable rate mortgages, even if every mortgage was done in the most honest, clean manner known to mankind, um, I knew that a lot of losers and schmucks. We're buying houses they couldn't afford. Okay. And that in five years from that date, all hell was going to break loose. That is the reason, by the way. You know, I bought a second home this year uh, in Santa Barbara County. That is the reason I didn't buy it five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago. Because I knew that the day was coming when there would be blood in the streets. And I said it on the air and I said it to friends. One day, there'll be blood in the streets, and that's when I'm going to swoop in and buy my house, and that's exactly what I did. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's a lot, lots of people who held out to do that and, and are going to continue to, to do that because now it's actually um, it's, it's where it should be. It's going to come down to uh, normal, average people being able to afford a home, and it doesn't have to be 80, 20, 100% finance yeah. with nothing down. I mean, I mean the irony of what happened when you had lower than, than market interest rates, interest rates that were too low, I think, uh, what you have is all the schmucks bidding up the cost of real estate so that the average, hardworking, middle-class person with a high FICO score, responsible, saver, investor, planner, that person got shut out of the housing market so the average moron flipper who watches the TLC or HGTV or thinks they're going to buy a house and slap a coat of paint on it and uh, become billionaires, these people come over and trample over the good, hardworking people who are left out of the housing market. I am thrilled to see these people. Uh, the, the, the flippers. I am thrilled to see them getting crushed and creamed. I don't want us to bail them out. And I am thrilled that the price of houses is now coming back to earth so that the responsible people can buy houses. I completely agree. I think that this this is what we needed. I mean, I'm not saying that everybody was, you know, everybody's situation is the same. Um, but I, I blame the banks. Uh, why were the underwriters, you know, uh, approving these loans? It was all corporate greed. It's not, it doesn't come down. You know, the realtors, the flippers, they're the little people, Tom. They're not the big guys. They're not the big guys who ended up cashing out stock in all these companies and are making... Yeah, but they games. were... But wait a minute. They're not. They were, wait, wait, wait. They were just as greedy. Oh, they I just had access to less capital. I don't think it could be measured, whether it's... They, they were as immoral and greedy as any of the so-called predators. Because these... I, I, by the way, I had an ex-girlfriend in this category who kept begging me, Come on! Let's buy five houses and we'll flip them! Like, I don't know anything about that business. Why would I want to do that? I'd be living under the freeway overpass with Ed McMahon right now if I followed her advice. I agree, but at the same time, the law of supply and demand was in place. They needed the homes. People, they were giving them. They were giving them to people. It was like, come in. You don't have to put anything down. But Everything that's only because interest rates, rates were. were that is only because interest rates went so low. Correct, but I mean that fueled it. So I, I still believe that it's not. The little people, yeah, they gained some, some from it. I'm not. I mean, no, they. Well, many of them didn't. 
But uh, they were just as greedy and had the, the exact same bad intentions as any predator. I agree. I mean, it's true. They, it, it was a- you know if you go in to apply for a, a loan where there's you, no income verification required that you're a deadbeat. You Stated know income. it. <laughs> yeah, you're in, you, you know you're a deadbeat. Uh-huh. You know it. You know you are. Uh-huh. It's true. I you mean, know I, you I, can't I afford the loan. You know you can't afford the loan. So if you're going out and getting a loan, a, a, a loan where you don't have to tell people how much money, you just say, well, uh, 200000 a year, 150000 a year. And then later on, you can't pay the bill. Why should I feel sorry for you, you greedy moron? You no, know, it's a, exactly, you're exactly right. It's I believe those people that were doing it were just as greedy or trying to, you know, get ahead just as quick as the other guy. But I uh, I blame I blame the banks and the industry. Oh, I I, I don't. The banks. You can't have a victim without a willing. You can't have a victim. In other words, uh, you can't have a predator without a willing victim. And in this case, that's exactly what you had. Yeah, but they were not putting. They were putting more than one person. You know, in a bad situation. They were putting all these people that the now the savers that money that that's their retirement money interest they live off well, of they money. never should have they never should yeah. have bought houses that they couldn't afford to pay for no correct but i'm saying altogether the banks that also created very willingly this monster have not just affected those people they've affected the savers because their money is being jeopardized their savings their interest the dividends they no no that's not true because uh nobody uh well except we'll put it this way people with over a hundred thousand dollars in the bank those people are going to pay for this, uh, but those uh, with less than a hundred thousand, which is most people, uh, they will not be affected by it. They will not be hurt by it, and in fact, many of them will benefit because now the houses that were placed out of their reach by these greedy flippers uh, will now be affordable once again. And nobody's happier about that than I am. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. It's the Tom Likas Show, wide open telephones on this Flash Friday. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. And if you're calling from any other country, that if you are streaming the show from, uh, from around the world, the 800 number won't work. So we have a separate international number for you. The country code is 1, the area code 323, and the number... 520-6211. That whole package again is 1-323-520-6211. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? You don't have to answer Great. that. It's a pleasure to talk to you. I think you're a great uh, broadcaster, entertainer, and remarkably consistent uh, with your topics and opinions. However, I think when you start talking about New York and New Yorkers, you start to, you don't sound like a professor anymore. You sound like a whiny chick who's complaining about New Yorkers and New York, and you start throwing out like facts, as though, op- opinions as other facts, and I just think you sound bad. You mean like about the fact that one out of four New Yorkers has genital herpes? So what does that mean, Tom? What it's a fact. What does that mean? It's you, a fact. You're, you're using that as a fact, as a fact to an It is a fact. That's great. What does that mean? Does that mean... Well, when someone calls up and tells me how many world championships the Yankees have won, they're throwing a number at me. And so I'm throwing a number at them. Don't you like to think you're better than those people? You certainly act like it. Uh, Again, you know, just because... You know what? You love the show until your ox got gored. No, but Tom, I'm amazed how how rattled you get when you talk about New York. I get loud when I talk about a lot of things. You don't, you don't sound confident when you talk about New York, and I'm wondering... I, mean, I don't sound you, confident? What are you talking about? You, Tom, you, you sound like one, maybe, you know, you're not on in New York. I mean, I get everyone, have, people have opinions about New York. New York is This has nothing to do with anything. I le- I believe me, I left New York and had no intention of being on the radio in New York. I left New York and uh, was on the radio in various cities, and I've enjoyed my career. And I went on the air in Los Angeles uh, 20 years ago last Friday. And uh, I was on in Los Angeles and loving life and having a great time. But my feelings about New York have been the same for decades. Sounds like you're saying them as though you're, I get that they're your feelings about New York. You're talking about them like they're facts, though. I left, 
Like what are facts? What yeah, specifically? Yeah. You, you say that, that uh, how long have you been, tell me about the 2000 World Series, Tom. How many times have you said that the 2000 World Series was the lowest rated World Series? Is That's the a fact. World Series, and that proves that. That's people, a fact. Is it that really is a fact. fact. Don't tell me I'm talking about it like it's a fact. It is a fact. It's not a fact, Tom. Four World Series since then have had lower ratings. No, that, that's not, that is not true. Tom, Tom, why don't you Google it while we're. I talking? already did. Check again, Tom. You use that as a fact to say people don't care about New York. The World Series with the White Sox and Houston was a lower-rated World Series. No, it was mean- not. Not nationally, it wasn't. Maybe in New York, it was, but not nationally, it wasn't. Tom. If you look it up, you'll see that you're not right. And even more than that, you use that as a fact to show that people don't care about New York. Because as you said... Because co- back then, everybody in New York that I know, and believe me, I grew up there, so I know a lot of people, was like, this is what everybody's been waiting for. The subways of the whole country's been waiting for this. Well, the whole country was not waiting for that. Um, who cares what those people say? As you yourself. Well, say, again, I, again, you know, you say who cares what those people say to make your point. The fact I mean, is, in LA, you are faced with a bunch of yutzes from the D train who are constantly complaining about the quality of bagels and pizza and claiming that Los Angeles has no culture. Culture. While meantime, uh, they move to Los Angeles and seem to seem to be enjoying the lifestyle. I, I get sh- I get sick of hearing it. My, my question is, why does that bother you so much? Because I'm, because I'm sick of hearing it. And you know what? Most of America is sick of it, too. There, there you go. See, Tom, that's where you sound like a whiny chick. That is your opinion. Oh, there you go. Most of America. Hey, Tom, that, you know what another thing you said was? Most of the, giant, most of the goddamn show is my opinion. But, what, but then when you say that's what most of America thinks. That is what most of America thinks. And you, and you use to base it. What you, you, your fact you use to supporting that. Then I go to the phones and most of the people who call in agree. Well, Tom, you know who you let on the air and who you don't let on. And that's one of your gifts and that's talk radio. Well, and how you, did you get on? Wait, how did you get on? I called a bunch of times because I wanted to talk. Yeah, but how, to, how did you get on? We knew what your opinion was. Why didn't we screen you out? I don't. I have no answer to that. That's well, you, well, you have no answer to that, and that's my point. Uh, we do not screen people out for their opinions. We don't, including you. Um, a few days ago, you had a guy. I appreciate that, and you're right about that. You had a guy on. You know, who was talking about you know, one of these boombots from New York talking about this. And he said, "Well, let me put Larry on the phone. He has a different opinion." And you, you're, but forget those people. You're trying to say as a fact that the rest of the country hates New York and New Yorkers. That's a fact. Uh, not every single person, I would say the majority of people around the country are sick of hearing about New York, and they're sick of New Yorkers. And this is based on my travels around the country. And, what about- and most, most of the yutzes from New York have never been to Texas, have never been to the state of Washington, or as they like to say, Oregon. Uh, they, they, the fact is, they haven't traveled. As, as cosmopolitan as most New Yorkers think they are. Most New Yorkers, when I question them, when I question them, cannot name places they have even traveled. Their opinions are based on riding the subway and going to ball games and walking down 7th Avenue. Their opinion is not, on reading the Daily News, their opinion is not based on travel or experience. Tom, I think you're 100% right. I'm just, what I, what I don't agree with is when you try to present as fact how you have bile about New York, and that's fine. It's earned. You get it. You know these people. But to, to put, try to, to like convince your audience to spin that everybody's sick of New York. I don't New have York, to convince them they already feel that way. <laughs> it's the fourth most popular visited city in the country. Why? That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean people aren't sick of New Yorkers and sick of hearing about New York and sick, by the way, of television and entertainment being aimed at the East Coast when one out of nine Americans lives in California. I know that. that you know, uh, let me uh, about a month ago, some guy called up and you were running him around and doing your expert thing because you're very good at it. And he, he, he said... You know, he's a guy who lived, you know, who lives in L.A., and he said New Yorkers are, are the type of people that get things done. And I don't think you remember what your answer was after you said, oh, really? If that's the case, why hasn't the World Trade Center been rebuilt? And that, Tom, is so unprofessorial. That is so low-grade. Why hasn't it been built? If you think it's because...
because of New Yorkers, Tom? Because Absolutely. It supports, it supports your thesis that New Yorkers are, are uh, having traveled to Oregon? Is that part of your thesis? You know what? No, I, now, you, now you are connecting the wrong dots. But you're all using this as examples to show how, how weak and lame and how much everybody hates New Yorkers. People do. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm just People grabbing do. the calls that are coming in. Let's see what they have to say. I don't even know what they're going to say. Gabriel, I don't you know do. what you're going to say. Right. Gabriel, tell yeah, David what you were going to say. I'm calling from Los Angeles, California to make a point. <clears throat> a lot of people from New York moved to Los Angeles. Why? Because it is the place where people want to be. It's a, it's a great place. I'm one of those people. It's a great place. We got the beach. We got the desert. We got the mountains. We got the snow. We got everything. I love Los Angeles, man. I think this place is great. And I think New Yorkers who rag on Los Angeles are foolish because they haven't spent enough time here. I get well, it. Well, you know what? Put the violin away. Put the pacifier away. What are you talking about? Put your about? purse down. Man up. Face up to it. L.A. is the place. Know, he's talking about, he's not talking about you, David. He's talking about the whiners. I understand that. It just seems like, you know, it just... That, that you're trying to use this to, to your opinion about New York, which is completely valid and understandable, and I get it. I grew up with those people. I grew up on Long Island. I, grew, I lived in Manhattan for 10 years, and I happily been here for 15 years, and I'm not moving back. It just seems when you're trying to present it as fact, you don't sound like Well, you. again, and you are mixing up what I present as fact and what I present as my opinion. Some things I say are facts, and some things I say are opinions based on experience, and I would say they are educated opinions. John, what did you want to say to David. I want to tell David how you doing. Shut the hell up because you live in LA and you need to quit focusing on New York. Okay? That's the first thing that you, all the New York people do. They move out to LA or to California or to Nevada or wherever and they're like, oh, back there it was so nice. Out here it's nasty. You ain't got no good pizza, nothing. You guys just need to quit crying all the time. You hear me doing that? Have you heard me say one bad thing about Los well, Angeles? I heard, I heard you crying about New York. That's all that matters. You just need to shut up and just take it. You live here. You got a your house here, obviously. So shut up about New York. There's nothing to do with New York and California. There's no New York and California. There never has been. There never will be. I don't think I'm not really listening anymore, but keep going. Tom? Yes. Again. Back to the thing where you know I don't know if anybody's checked on the uh, the lowest rated World Series book. You said it was not the 2000 World Series. Well, now now the- you're repeating your material. No, now you know how I feel about repeating material. Now I'll go past it. You're using that as an example. You use that as sort of as a fact to show that nobody cares about New York. And I, I didn't say that-, that nobody cares about New York. I said that the, the that the yutzes who were telling me everybody's waiting for this the subway series they were nuts. They were delusional. I Everybody was it. not waiting for that. And if it's the fourth lowest rated World Series of all time, it still proves my point that everybody was not waiting for that. See, Tom, and that, that's where More people not- wanted to see the Boston Red Sox win a World Series than to watch the Mets play the Yankees. And that doesn't prove a point. It proves, it proves the have- point that the person who said that everybody was waiting for the 2000 World Series was delusional. So you're doing this all to prove a point to one person. No, that was one of the many things I talked about on the program. It's Hang on a not- second here. Brett, what did you want to say to David? Let's uh, see what Brett has to say. Brett? Oh, here he is. Okay, Brett, go ahead. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Okay. Hey, uh, this guy, I mean, you're from the East Coast, and we understand that. One thing you should do, though, is stay there. All the West Coasters, I'm born and raised in Manhattan Beach. There is a same going around with all the bros. No East Coast kooks, ever. Is that it? That's it, man. No East Coast kooks do that. Dude, I'm not complaining about the West Coast for a second. I think it's awesome out here. That's why I live here. Well, I mean, the, here's the thing, though. We all have opinions of New York, and usually they're right on. I mean, I, I've never called into Tom ever, listened to him all the time. He's right on about this subject. The guys in New York are really whiny. They're baby. They're, they're all about themselves. West Coast is more laid back. It's a completely different lifestyle. And what Tom's saying is co- totally true. But it's ignorant to think that that's what all New Yorkers are. And that's, okay. That's oh, hold on a second, though. He didn't say all New Yorkers. He said a lot of the New Yorkers and most other New Yorkers are like that. And you, are you disagreeing that most people aren't like that in New York? That's have you been down in Times Square lately? Have you been to Central Park lately? A lot of these people are crazy, whacked out, and nut jobs. 
That's asked why we don't want East Coast Coke share. You ask me a question, I'll answer it. I do disagree. I plenty of people are like that. But that's, you know, anytime you say you stereotype and say all people are like this, it's, it's ignorant. And my I never said that all people are like that. Just the preponderance of them. <laughs> and that, that is the majority right there. I mean, you tell me there's a lot of New Yorkers that are, are just like California people or like Arizona people, West Coast people. That are I mean, I would never have said all New Yorkers are like that because I was born in New York and I lived there for 25 years. So clearly all New Yorkers are not like that. Just most of them. <laughs> you don't consider yourself a New Yorker, though, anymore. I've been listening. No, to you. I don't. Here's, here's the difference, though. Tom, you've got to say, since you've been here, the X number of years you've been here, you've actually changed. You've accustomed to the lifestyle of California, correct? Oh, not only have I, I First of all, I've been here 20 years. And second of all, before I came here, I lived in Phoenix, just 350 miles away for three years. Mm -hmm. I lived in Miami for a couple of years. So this whole idea that New York is the center of the universe, I, I purged my system of that a long time ago. And when I got to L.A., uh, the most amazing thing was meeting New Yorkers and hearing them complain constantly about Los Angeles. Now, are there New Yorkers who, who don't complain about Los Angeles? Yeah, there are some. But the vast majority of them say, there's no pizza out here. You guys ain't got no culture out here. <laughs> I hear this all the time. And that's, and that's the end result. If you're not happy here, you should split and go back to the East Coast where you belong. Because that's I what never, you're looking for. never said for a second I'm, I wasn't happy here. I'm very happy here. And I agree that there are a lot of New Yorkers who are like that. I totally agree. I just don't like when I hear sort of things thrown out there presented as fact to prove <laughs> An opinion. You don't approve an opinion. It's your opinion. Like it, if I, whether I like it or not. And it's not that I don't agree with it. I don't think there are facts to base your opinion on as much as you're saying you're here for people. I get that. The World Series of 2000 is not a fact that proves anything. It's the fifth time you brought that up. Brett, thank you. Uh, let me get Howard in here. Howard, what did you want to say to David? Let me, uh, oh, there he is. I'm sorry. Let me, uh, uh, Howard, what did you want to say to David? I think you really need to shut the hell up. You really have no idea what you're talking about. Facts are only facts until they're proven wrong. And this they proved them wrong, Howard. Show. It's this not the lowest opinion world. is fact. Yeah. This is Tom's liking world. You're in his world. I all think. right? And no offense. Howard. New Yorkers, you're awesome. You're awesome, man. I live in New York. I live in L.A. now. I love both cities. I love my Lakers. And there's no real sports team in New York that I really like. That's funny because uh, Hey, Tom, then you start ragging on the Knicks as though Knicks fans don't know we have the worst sports team in all sports. Oh, I know you know you do, but the fact is that the Knicks get an inordinate amount of attention considering they stink. They and, stink and then so you go bad. about... You go back to that, the facts. It's what, what, what fact? Where's the fact that Nick's getting an ornament? I mean, I said, Nick fans and I never claimed it was a fact. All you have to do is watch television to see it. Any Look, any time they're on television is too much. Any time you show one of their games, it's too much. Any time you show a story about Spike Lee or Woody Allen sitting at Madison Square Garden watching that god-awful team, it's too much coverage. You're talking about a two-minute segment on ESPN along with every other game that got played that night? Where are you what? seeing all these stories? Are you kidding me? No, You're kidding me, right? You're no, kidding no, me. And sports television for 10 years. I don't know where you're seeing all these stories. It's on all the time. There's yeah. even stories all the time about the soap opera that goes on there. Stefan Marbury and going back to the Larry Brown soap opera and the Isaiah Thomas soap opera and the lawsuits involving the Knicks. Yeah, you get too much coverage. Not to mention the over coverage of the, uh, the New York Yankees who, who have not uh, won a World Series since 2000. But are still uh, the more merchandise sold on that team. Irrelevant, team. because New York is the biggest city full of yutzes who are going to go out and spend money on that crap. It proves you, nothing. You, there you go, not sounding like the professor again. When you go to fact, you don't like the fact that the Yankees uh, have more merchandise than any other team. What does that tell you? It, it tells me that the Yankees are in the largest market in America. 18 million people live in the New York metropolitan area, and therefore they sell more merchandise than anybody, period. That's, that is the way it works. If you're in the biggest markets, you sell the most merchandise, and that is that. Uh, 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Yeah, that's right. It's the Tom Likas Show. You want to make something up? Yeah. One eight hundred five eight hundred talk. 
That's our telephone number. It's Nishan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. First time, long time, Tom. My dad got yes. listening to you when I was 16. Haven't Love stopped it. listening to you. Love anyway, it. we got a story for you. I met a cougar a month ago, right? I was at the <laughs> Orange County Film Festival. <laughs> Orange County Film Festival. We went to the movie premiere. Her friend came up to one of my buddies. After that, we're like, yeah, we're going out to the uh, after party. We go there. They're totally eyeing us the whole time. Three of them, right? One of them is definitely kitty cat, for sure. Little kitty cat. Anyway, start talking to the hottest one there out of the three. Gorgeous. Red dress, boltons. Diane Lane with boltons, pretty much. Anyway, we start talking to her. She's like, I have two questions for you. I'm like, yeah, what's up? She's all, you like older women? And how old are you? I'm like, I love older women. And I kind of hesitate on my age. She's like, are you around 30? I'm like, yeah, yes. <laughs> 24. Anyways. So then I started talking. She's like, oh, what do you do? I told her I run a company. I am uh, buying a house in Hollywood, and I'm about to buy a machine shop. All three of those completely lies. I'm in school right now, actually trying to finish. And, uh, yeah, she bought it. Anyways, got her number, and then uh, two weeks later, hang out with her. I get some drinks with her in Tustin, right? We go to this Irish pub. All these old, like, white dudes, businessmen for sure, drinking beers. I walk in, beer waiting for me sit down. I'm just like laughing inside because I couldn't believe what's happening. This is awesome. And uh, she's just like, yeah, so uh, after these drinks, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, I don't know. You know what? She's like, well, I'll have dinner with my boss. I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. I really don't want to go that way because that's a few more lies I might have to tell. She's like, well, just tell him you're 36. I'm like, what? Do I really look 36? <laughs> Anyways, I definitely don't look 36, all right? Few, few gray hairs, but not 36 enough, right? And uh, she was just like, I'm like, you know what? Why not? Nothing to lose, right? Go there, meet her boss. She ended up going to the same school I go to right now. She's like 40. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, I graduated there six years ago or seven years. I, said, I think I said seven years ago. And she, I just started just shooting the crap with her. And uh, she just loves me. I'm like, yeah, we got we to gotta do all these things together. Anyways, we're at the sushi place, the restaurant we're at, right? And we order everything. I order I don't even order. I order California chicken, whatever. California rolls off the menu. They order everything. I'm like, wow, this bill's going to be gnarly, right? And, uh, oh, yeah, the bill's like 400 bucks. Right before the bill came, I went to the bathroom. Came back. She's like, oh, we just paid for it. <laughs> I was like, chicken, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> right? Oh, totally, dude, it was awesome. I, I don't know how much better it could have gotten. And then we leave. She's like, her friends or her boss, like, I'm going to go home. She's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, you know, let's go to a bar. So we go to this bar in Laguna, right? And uh, it's just totally cougar fest. Wow. We have to go here. Me and my friends, we have to go back. Anyways, I'm there hanging out. I could actually buy these drinks from her. I don't know, like 20 bucks. Got her some wine. I got a beer. And uh, anyways, we end up at her place, right? And then I wake up in the morning. I see, I hear water crashing on the the the, uh, the beach. I'm like, where the hell am I right now? I get up. I'm I'm overlooking the ocean, Laguna Beach. I'm like, are you serious right now? I couldn't believe it. Anyway, so I go back to bed. I'm hanging out there, whatever. And she's like, next time you come over here, bring a dozen condoms. <laughs> so I was like, oh, if I just have to do that. It was awesome. Anyway, so I take you back to your car. And uh, that was it. It was, it was honestly epic. It was the best time of my wow. life. It was Look at you. Top. You have no idea. Like, literally, I, whoever's 20 to 30 better do it. From, like, she's at least, I'd say Diane Lane with fake boots, for sure. From Unfaithful. <laughs> you, were, you were Diane Lane from Unfaithful? Yeah, 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 with yeah. A nicer, with a nicer rear end. <laughs> Way nicer rear end. Nice, like, oh, my eyes looked at her when she was putting her pants on. I'm like, are you serious? You have to be at least pushing 45. And I just did that right now. And don't get me wrong. When I was, yeah, you know, when I was uh, having a sexual intercourse with her, it was awesome. I'm like, is this 45 years of age right now? There's no way. Because it was, it was awesome. I mean, you know, I just couldn't believe it. And, uh, yeah. You know, Tom, it's all thanks to you and my father for telling me to listen to you. I love 16. that. I lied to her and it worked. And guess what? Every time I talked to her, I was in my lab in class. I'm like, yeah, I'm in my office right now taking care of a few business calls. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to call you see how you're doing. <laughs> I was in lab, okay? Are you serious? How, 
<laughs> she had no idea. No idea. It was awesome. Unbelievable. Nishad, thank you very much. <laughs> Love that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Larry, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing there, buddy? How you doing? How you doing, buddy? Hey, Tom, you know, I'm from the Bronx myself, Tom. And uh, I heard you talking about where you uh, lived there for a few years. Yes. I, I was born and raised right, well, I was born right there. I was born in Jacoby Hospital. But check this out, Tom. I'm on 171st. On Towns, between Townsend and Walnut, right there is PS64. You know the place? I do. You were right over the hill from me. Yeah, you were on the other side of the concourse there, right? I, I was at 172nd and Grand, and actually not Grand Concourse, Sheridan Avenue. Sheridan, yeah. I was right across from Taft Avenue High there. School. That's where I grew up. That's right. Yeah, I, you wasn't there very long, Tom. You only there to what? You said you were eight years old or something? No, no, no. Almost 11 I was there. And uh, then after that, I spent uh, six years on Long Island. And then I moved back to the Bronx. I lived uh, Grand Avenue and Fordham Road. And then I lived uh, 205th Street in the Concourse. Oh, okay. Well, just I hear you talking about these New Yorkers, Tom. I've been out here in California half my life. I'm not a youngster, you know. And uh, I hear you talk about New York like, Tom, like you're not from there. I'm done with New York, and I've been done with New York for more than a quarter century. Yeah, but, Tom, when you're born in New York, you're always a New Yorker, Tom. No, never, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, Tom, you're not. You, ever, you ever shoot the gap in New York, Tom? Shoot the gap? Yeah. I don't know what that means. Shooting the gap. They got five-story buildings all over the Bronx. A space between the buildings is called the gap. You jump from one building to the other. You, you never, never ever did. No, I didn't. Well, then you're not a real New Yorker, Tom. There you go. I've been telling you. You're that. not a New Yorker. You never shot the gap, Tom. You know, no. there's only one thing you need to know. I about played New York, stick Tom. ball, stoop ball, hit the penny. Uh, but I know <laughs> I never shot the gap. Johnny on the pony. Yeah. I know all them games. Ring Olivio. Hey, Tom, you know, you got to remember one thing, Tom. If it What's ain't that? New York water, it ain't New York pizza. Well, Larry, again, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, if, you know, if that's how you feel, if that's how you feel, <laughs> the Bronx is there waiting for you. Yeah. All right, hey, Tom, look, hey, uh, take me out with uh, New York style, will you? What would that be? You don't have a New York style, Tom. No one's ever requested that. That could be like, uh, hey, hey, you, you, hey, both of you guys over there, all three years, hey, hey over here, uh, hey, uh, hey, all three All right, years. we got something for you, Larry. Here you go. Oh, yeah, the disco version. <laughs> there it is. Unbelievable. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. By the way, go to our website, BlowMeUpTom.com, and learn all about how you can use your iPhone to stream the Tom Likas show live. BlowMeUpTom.com. This is worth looking at, baby. It's the Tom Likas show.